In this video, I'm going to create a formula to find the area of a regular polygon. Uh, this is a formula that will work for any regular polygon, whether or not it's got five congruent sides, pentagon, six congruent sides, seven congruent sides, heptagon. This will even work for an equilateral triangle. It'll even work for a square. I don't think it would be the easiest approach for those, but it will work for any regular polygon. Okay, so I'm going to do this with variables. So what I have here, I have an octagon, um, but again, this will work for any number of sides. Um, I'm calling each of the side lengths S, okay? So remember that you can find the area of one triangle, okay? And then you can multiply it by the number of triangles, and that would give you the whole area, okay? So for example, if this area was 10, uh, there are eight of those triangles. I could just take eight times 10 and get an area of 80 if, if I had the area of that first triangle, okay? So you find the area of a triangle by taking half the base times the height, okay? The base is S, that's representing the entire side, okay? So half of the base times the height. Remember that altitude of that triangle goes from the center of the shape to the midpoint of the opposite side is called the apothem. So I'm calling that A to represent apothem. So half the base of F of S times the height, which is the apothem, okay? That's the area of one triangle, okay? Then I'm going to multiply by the number of triangles, okay? The number of triangles is the same as the number of sides. So I'm going to multiply by the number of sides, okay? So we have the area of one triangle times the number of sides or times the number of triangles. That would be the overall area, okay? I'm going to move my formula around a little bit. If you notice, this and this and this and this are all being multiply it, okay? The commutative property says if I'm multiplying things, I can change the order around and get other things that are equivalent, okay? So I'm going to take one half the apothem, and then I'm going to multiply by the side lengths, and then I'm going to multiply by the number of sides, okay? I want you to look at this right here. The side length times the number of sides. So for example, if the side length was 10 and there are eight sides, I could take eight times 10, I would get 80, okay? If I had side lengths of six and there were five sides, I could take six times five and I would get 30, okay? When you multiply the length of a side times the number of sides, what does that tell you about your shape? It tells you the perimeter. So the length of a side times the number of sides is the same thing as the perimeter, okay? This is the formula that your book is gonna give you for the area of a regular polygon. They're gonna tell you that the area is equal to one half the length of the apothem times the perimeter, okay? One half the apothem times the perimeter. Now, you have to use this formula every time? Not really, okay? You could still find the area of one triangle and multiply by the number of triangles. It'll do the same thing. Uh, but it is a relatively quick and easy way to find the areas of, of shapes, okay? Let me do one with a hexagon, and then we'll, we'll look at uh, some other kind of shape. Um, okay, so half the apothem times the perimeter. Um, let's say we had a hexagon, and let's say that the hexagon lengths are uh, let's say that each of the side lengths is four, okay? So it's a regular hexagon. So you can break that up into four equilateral triangles uh, with four inch sides, and there are six of those triangles. That would work fine, okay? But this formula will also work. So the apothem length is gonna be right there, okay? So we wanna find half the apothem times the perimeter. Well, remember that Hexagons break up into equilateral triangles. That's a little 30, 60, 90 triangle. I didn't draw it very well, but it's a little 30, 60, 90 triangle. So if this length is two, and this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle, that length would be four. The apothem would be two radical three, okay? So I could fill in two radical three right there. The perimeter, each side length is four. There's six sides. Four times six is 24, okay? We can multiply these together, that'll be 48 radical three. Half of that is gonna be 24 radical three, and that's the area of my hexagon, okay? Very quick, very easy to work with, okay? So, it's not the only way to do these problems, but I am gonna use that formula pretty often. I want you to know that formula. 
Uh, if you get really lucky, they'll maybe give you a side length and they'll give you the aptham and then you can crank it out very quickly. Most of the time though, you're actually gonna have to find the aptham. Okay, so let's look at two additional examples here and uh, make sure we're comfortable with everything. Um, let's try an octagon. Okay, so let's say that I have a regular octagon and let's say that the side lengths are six, okay? So uh, again, we can put my apothem in here. Uh, there's my, my A value right there, all right? Now remember, you could break this up into eight different triangles if you wanted to and then find the area, area of one of those triangles, multiply by eight, you'd be done. Um, all right, a couple things here. Remember that the angle measures for an octagon you can divide 360 by 8, gives you 45. If your exterior angle is 45, that means that this interior angle is 135, okay? So this thing has 135 degree interior angles, and that's going to be a really, really important fact as we go through these problems, okay? 135 degree interior angle. Let me, uh, let me zoom just slightly on this. There we go, okay. Um, so we've got 135 degree interior angles. 135 divided by 2 is 67.5. So that angle right there is a 67.5 degree angle. Okay, remember, octagons, pentagons, anything that's not a hexagon, they won't break up in equilateral triangles. Okay, so here's what we've got. I'll take one of those little triangles there, and I've got a 67.5 degree angle there. Uh, the whole length here is six, so that means this length here is three. I'm looking for the length of the apothem, okay? So, you can use your Sokotoa rules, trig, and notice I have an opposite side and an adjacent side here, so this is gonna be a tangent rule. Remember, you take the tangent of the angle measure, and that's equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side, which is gonna be A over three, okay? Make sure your calculator is in degree mode. Um, you can take the tangent of 67.5. Uh, you can multiply both sides by three, and that's gonna end up telling you your apothem value, okay? In this particular case, it's gonna be about 7.243. So A is gonna be approximately 7.243. Again, if you can leave the entire decimal in your calculator, that would really be a little bit better, but for writing it down, I'm, I'm gonna put it on the paper here, as, uh, or put it on the whiteboard as three decimal places. Um, all right, just fill everything in the formula and we're done. So I'm gonna take half the apothem. Uh, apothem is gonna be about 7.243 times the perimeter, okay? Uh, this is a, an octagon, there are eight sides. Six times eight is 48, okay? So I'm gonna multiply 48 by that decimal I got in my calculator. I'm gonna take half of that answer and the final area is going to be about 173.82. Uh, again, the question hopefully will tell you what to round to. If it doesn't say, I think two decimal places would probably be appropriate for most of these problems. Okay, let's do one more. Um, let's go back to a pentagon. I know I've done a pentagon in a previous video, but I don't think I did it with this formula. So um, let's say I had a pentagon. And let's say the pentagon has side lengths of three. Let's, let's mix it up. Um, all right, so I need the apothem length, okay? Um, and again, I can make a little triangle here. Remember that pentagons have 108 degree angles, okay? So 108 gets divided by two, that's gonna be a 54 degree angle on the inside there, okay? If this whole side is three, this little piece here is 1.5, all right? So once again, the nice thing here is um, a lot of times they're going to give you an apothem, or you're going to have to find an apothem. A lot of times the setup's going to be the same. Um, so again, if I pull that triangle out, I've got a side length of 1.5, I've got an apothem, I've got a 54 degree angle. Uh, we have to decide which trig rule here. I've got an opposite side and an adjacent side, okay? It's another tangent. So I take the tangent of 54, that's equal to the opposite over the adjacent, A over 1.5. Um, make sure you're in degree mode. Multiply both sides by 1.5. And 1.5 times the tangent of 54. It's gonna tell me that my apothem is about 2.06. Okay, again, 
If you can, keep it in your calculator. At this point, you should be able to fill everything into the formula and get an answer pretty nicely. So let's try it. Uh, one half the apothem of about 2.065 actually, uh, times the perimeter. Got five sides, each has a length of three, so multiplying by 15. Okay, so I'll multiply that apothem times 15. I'll take half of that, and our area is approximately 15.48 square units. All right, so again, whether or not you find the area of one triangle and multiply it by five, you're going to need trig to find the altitude of that triangle, or if you use the new one-half the apothem times the perimeter formula, you're still going to need to use trig to find that apothem length. So make sure you know how to find angles of regular polygons, preferably memorize that pentagons have 108 degree angles, hexagons have 120 degree angles, and octagons have 135 degree angles. But there's nothing stopping me from giving you a heptagon or a decagon or some other shape, so make sure you know how to find angle sides. That helps.